Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus Reports. And this is Ben and Barry on football. Today I will be doing the show um, sans Mr. Ben, um, who has other family business, but today is his birthday. So I wanna give him a shout out. Happy birth to you, sir. We've known each other almost 40 years now. And every day you seem to get just a little day older, but I guess we all do, right? That's just the way it is. So happy birthday, Ben. I hope the day turns out to be better than you thought it would be. <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, week four is in the books, ladies and germs, um, in the NFL. A really fun week of football. Uh, we put out the Bias Plus reports, which discusses or which looks at the matchups based on net points and net turnover differential. And there's always other factors that can come into play. But generally, uh, it's amazing how close that is. We finished up uh, 2020 at just under 70% uh, in the correct uh, area for the matchups. Um, this early part of the season, we call the uh, second preseason because the starters don't really play in the preseason. So we call it the second preseason where everybody's kind of getting to play for, to get to play together, excuse me, for the first time. Long story short, some teams come out of the, you know, starting lineup pretty quickly and some teams don't. And a lot of things have to kind of gel. I, um, for example, really feel this. I, I, I'll show you, I play, Madden, I'm the Madden guy, Ben's the fantasy guy, and I, I follow our schedule. And uh, with the new game, new playbook, um, just you know, just enough that I really had to kind of go back and relearn things. I can truly say that I that I empathize with the people in the NFL trying to, you know, figure everything out. But those teams that figure it out or kind of maybe are able to just pick up where they left off, um, will be fortunate. However, the offenses, in some cases, are picking up where they left off. Sometimes, in, in a few cases, it's the defenses that are picking up where they left off. One example, um, I do what's on my Sterling Net Point Power Rankings, which you can find on Facebook. I do what we call uh, the intriguing game of the week. Now, last week, the intriguing game of the week was the Lions and the Bears. Now, this is the crazy thing. Um, I really like the Lions because of how well they played against my Niners. I am a devout Niner fan. And the Niners really put some points, put up like uh, 41 points. And we won the game 41, like 33. So I, I was like, okay, these guys, you know, they don't quit. They keep coming. I kind of like that. Um, and then they had to contend with Aaron Rodgers and they lost a couple people on defense. And I think it really kind of took the heart out of this club. You know, it, it's an amazing thing how sometimes, you, you know, uh, some of these teams can lose a player or two and, and it doesn't affect them and other teams, it really has a profound effect. So the intriguing game of the week uh, was the Lions at the Bears. Um, and when we looked at it from a particularly a number perspective, okay, uh, both teams were bringing up the bottom in our focus categories, points for, points against and turnover differential. Like I said, turnover differential. Um, the Lions were 22nd in points four uh, with uh, 67 points scored. And uh, the Bears defense was ranked 19th. So one's ranked 22nd, the other's ranked 19th. Not a big deal. The Bears were allowing 77 points. And, uh, and when I looked at the sort of the schedule that they had played, the Bears had, placed, had played the Rams, the Bengals, and the Browns in their opening three weeks. So, you know, we know that the Lions were defensively challenged. They lost a few of their people. 
the thing that happened out of this game, um, I, and I kind of looked at it, the Lions uh, had the bias in their favor, but it was a small, small bias. To, uh, the, you know, I said that the games were going to be determined by who wants it more and who makes the least mistakes. What I could not uh, calculate into that was Justin Fields. So Justin Fields uh, has been introduced as the Bears' starting quarterback. They finally made up their mind. They're going to live and die. Go with Justin. Um, Justin was always neck and neck with Trevor Lawrence, who was with the Jaguars and definitely starting. So, you know, he has no choice. He's the number one. He was starting. Um, Justin, they had a couple people. They had Andy Dalton. They had Nick Foles there already. Two guys with a lot of experience, but both pretty much confirmed backups at this particular point. And Justin showed a, few, a little bit of a spark in a couple games. Then he came out and had a stinker of a game. But strong-willed, strong-minded young man and came back against the Lions and did the darn thing. And that was the biggest surprise. So my intriguing game, uh, the, the bias did not, you know, um, cover the, you know, who was favor. Um, the Bears overcame that bias. Justin Fields and the Bears won that game. And he showed the type of, of uh talent and skills that means that the bears are going to have some exciting football in the up and coming seasons and even the end of this season so it's going to be interesting to see how they fare uh what are they in the nfc central you know so lions and bears you still got green bay you got the vikings all up in there so uh they have some competition and it's going to be interesting to watch um to watch justin fields mature um my own niners um, I actually said on one of the uh, social media that uh, the Trey Lance era has begun. Um, of course, Garoppolo was injured. Something happened. Um, the interesting thing about Garoppolo and uh, Trey Lance on the Madden game is that Garoppolo was like rated 75 and Trey Lance is rated 74. So <laughs> even the games see that as a very small difference. Uh, I literally um play with trey lance because he has a a bit of a stronger arm and he's more mobile and if i need to i can run um it's not that garoppolo can't but you're always scared when he does so um interesting interesting scenario there um between with my niners and trey lance now as the potential starting quarterback i think there's much more chance that garoppolo will play and they'll play more you know, be back and forth between the two of them. But Trey Lance is the backup and he needs to be prepared, um, you know, in case that he's called into duty and it's high probability with Garoppolo that he will. Okay. Okay. In this portion of the show, we're going to take a look at the Sterling Pro Football Net Point Power Rankings. And we're looking at the bottom quarter of the league, 32 teams in the league. We're looking at the bottom eight. And we're looking at the different um, uh, focused statistics, net points, points for, points against, and turnover differential. I believe this is the baseline. This is where you start when you're kind of looking at a team. I mean, let's see you know, where they are. So for example, if you look at number 32 in net points, that means that the Falcons at minus 50 have scored uh, 50 points less than their competition. And you'll see that they, they for example, in the next uh, column over, you'll see points for Falcons at 78. And then in the next column over from that, you'll see points against, you'll see Falcons back at 32 at 128. 78 minus one or 128 minus 78 rather there's your 50 that's how the lions wound up with uh, a negative 50 in net points excuse me the falcons uh wound up in 32nd place with minus 50 net points interestingly when you look at the at the final column turnover differential they are not there that means they're not in the bottom quarter in turnovers so okay 
That's awesome. Now, look who is in the bottom quarter. Number 25, the Steelers, right there above the Bears, who I just talked about, and the Lions, who I just talked about. And as you can see, now that the Bears have beaten the Lions, the net points put the Bears in favor there. They are, what, 11 points um, ahead, both and still in the negative. Down there with the Jaguars, the Dolphins, the Jets, the Texans, and the Falcons. What are the Steelers doing down there? Well, number one, they're 28th in scoring, if you look in the next column, 67. Uh, and that'll put you down there. And then also in the final column, uh, they are 26 in turnover differential with minus two. So a lot of conversation about Big Ben this week and whether or not he should just go ahead and sit down. The, the Steelers have no one on the bench that they can depend on to take them anywhere in and toward the playoffs. So Big Ben's going to have to get it done. And, you know, it's funny how you watch media. I watched it and I saw uh, a number of times when they were talking about how badly he played and they kept showing these poor throws. He had a few. He had a few. But they weren't showing the touchdown that he dropped as a dime on that guy and it was pretty deep so you know I don't think that they were totally fair I think they were just you know graphically making their argument but I think in, in um deference to Ben uh they know what they have and they did not go out and try to get a replacement quarterback a real starter for this year so they're going to have to live with that um and we'll see what happens beyond that but bottom eight uh you'll see in um Offensive production, the Patriots are actually ahead of the Steelers. So I, I talk about neighborhoods. The Steelers are in the neighborhood of the Falcons, Jaguars, Texans, Bears. That's where the neighborhood they're in offensively. They're going to have to do better than that. Next quarter up would be number, ranked 17 through 24. So here, as you can see in the first and the last column in net points and turnover differential um they're the ones that can go positive and negative so number 17 and number 18 are the vikings the vikings are one net point ahead of the patriots the packers are are still minus five and we we kind of call this a skew the bottom line is that uh the packers lost so badly in game one against the saints that as they're that their net points looks terrible and they but they came out in the next three games looking like the packers of last year who were the the number one points production team in the nfl last week and so they looked lost in game one they got back on track in game two three and four and uh it looks like they're really uh cooking at this particular point Aaron Rodgers looks great. Um, so Packers at negative five, that's kind of skewed. The Eagles, Giants, Colts, Titans, and Washington, those numbers are what they are. They're going to have to show that they're better. Notice three of those, number 20, 21, and 24, all in the same division. That's that NFC East, or as last year they called it the NFC Least. The next column over, and I'm sorry I don't have the headings there. Uh, that's your points for that's the point production uh, as you can see uh, Saints are at 17 they're tied with the Vikings at 94 and tied with the Eagles at 94 so you're looking at your your low 90s uh, and low 80s Broncos Colts Giants Lions all low 80s and the points against right there at number 17 the Colts right below them the Rams now again Here's where you have a bit of a surprise because the Rams were considered the number one defense in 2020. But right now they're giving up based on points against, they're ranked 18th. Uh, Packers, Raiders, and Seahawks, 19, 20, and 21, all giving up 100 points. The Niners, just below that at 102, Buccaneers and Eagles. So just on, on the bottom half there, defensively, you have contenders rams packers raiders seahawks niners and buccaneers i'm going to leave the eagles out right now on that particular but why are their defenses 
so low. We talked about this earlier, and I said some teams came out, you know, uh, quick came out of the blocks quicker than others. But some came out better offensively. Some came out better defensively. So let's take a look at the next up where we are now in the top half of the Sterling Pro Football Net Point Power Rankings. Again, you can find us on uh, Facebook and Twitter. I'm just sort of firing up the Instagram on this. Um, but if you simply Google Sterling Net Point Power Rankings, I threw the pro football in there because I don't know if people knew what net points I were ranking. I was ranking <laughs> so I said, let me make become a little more descriptive. Uh, but here we go. Sterling Pro Football Net Point Rankings top half. We're looking at nine through 16. So right there, at the top of the first half, tied with the Buccaneers are the Bengals. I think people are, are trying to figure out how authentic are the Bengals. Are the Bengals for real? And interestingly, if you have a good quarterback, and Joe Burrow is a good quarterback, and he's throwing to seasoned receivers, which he is, he can be pretty good. So the Bengals right now, net point-wise, are tied with the Buccaneers. They're ahead of the Rams, the Ravens, the Chiefs, the Niners, the Raiders, and the Seahawks at plus 17. That means that defensively, they're getting the job done. Now, on the offensive side at number nine, you have the Raiders at 104 points scored. They're just ahead of the Seahawks, Washington, and the Browns, all in the three-digit 100 range with the Browns bringing up the rear at 100. Below that, you have the Panthers, Chargers, Packers, and Titans. Chargers, Packers, and Titans, and uh, Titans, excuse me, all tied at 95. So these now you're starting to see a little bit stronger offensive. They're, they've got some offensive production going on here, um, and but they're still in, in the uh, the uh, I guess the second half. This is be the second quarter of all of the teams in terms of rankings. Points against those Cardinals are 85. We're going to talk a little bit about. The Cardinals, because again, I simulated that game. Bears at 91. This is points allowed. Ravens at then number 12. Ravens are 11, excuse me, giving up 92. Tied with the Vikings, giving up 92. The Steelers giving up 93, just above the Jets. Again, when I talk about neighborhoods, what are the Steelers doing near the Jets, Giants uh, defensively? The Cowboys is very interesting. They're getting a lot of uh, a positive talk about um, their defense, and it has improved because it was approximately 32nd rank last year. So to now be 16th rank is a numerical improvement. Got to give them their due. You know that's why I like the numbers. They are what they are. And then in the final uh, column there, tied turnover differential. Uh, you've got the, your, your net zeros from 13 down through 16 with the Raiders, Rams, Dolphins, and Vikings, net plus one, Buccaneers and Giants, and plus two, there are the Packers and the Broncos. Okay, so who is your top quarter? Who is the top quarter in terms of the rankings? One through eight. Number one, net points, you have the Buffalo Bills at plus 90. This is the section where you see your playoff teams, you see your, your Super Bowl contenders. A Super Bowl um, has generally not been won by the number one ranked team in net points, but it has come from pretty much that top eight group. So we're looking at number two. They were number one last week, the Cardinals, at 55. Um, but, you know, they played my Niners. So, you know, we had to give them some work. We didn't win that game, but okay, you know. Um, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, the Broncos at thirty-four, the Browns at thirty-three. We're looking at plus numbers here in the net points, and number five, the Panthers at plus thirty-one. So your top five: Bills, Cardinals, Broncos, Browns, and Panthers. Cowboys coming in at six with twenty-nine. Uh, Saints at seven with 25. Now, the Saints are on the other end of that skew that we talked about with the Packers, okay? Um, Saints won big that game, but have not looked as strong going in. But because they won by so many, they've been sort of held up in the net point rankings. 
It is what it is. And charges with that Justin Fields guy, that guy is absolutely amazing. Talk about uh, a, a rookie quarterback who, you know, came out looking like a vet. I mean, just, just showing the type of talent and skills. You're like, why was he on the bench, you know? So, uh, but this is his second year and uh, they're looking for bigger things from him. All right. Numero uno in points four. Let's give it to the Cardinals. Kyler Murray. Man, that's in my division, too. So, you know, I ain't super happy about this, but 140 points is the highest point uh, points for in the NFL, finishing up week four <clears throat> and going into the last game of the second preseason. Uh, so after this, it's going to be on for real, for real. And I also believe the buys are going to start to kick in. Uh, on, the, on these numbers, uh, when the buys kick in, we will generally revert to averages. Makes the numbers look smaller, but it takes into account the buys. I, you know, I don't want to have a team that played eight games being ranked against a team that played seven games. So you have to go to averages through that. But then once the buys are over, we can go to gross numbers again. Anyway, points four. Right behind them, them are the Bills and the Chiefs at 134 points. Cowboys at 126. Dak is back, no doubt. And the Buccaneers at 122. So, like I said, some of these teams are in the bottom quarter defensively. They came out strong offensively in this first quarter of the season. Uh, look at the Rams, look at my Niners, and look at the Ravens. So all of those are names that you expect are going to be there around playoff time. Points against the Bills, man. Jeez, that's how you get a, 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 a plus 90 in net points. You, you've only given up 44 points over the first four games. That's an average of a little, little over what? Four points? One to 44, 11 points a game? That's about it. You're giving up about 11 points a game. So the uh, Broncos, 49. Panthers, 66. Browns, 67. Saints, 69. Skew with the Saints. Patriots, 70. Patriots defense, this is where their defense has generally is when they were winning and when Tom Brady was there last year was an anomaly because of COVID and the opting out that they had. Those guys are back. And so um, very interesting with the Patriots. And it gives that uh, young quarterback, Mac Jones, a chance. The Chargers, there's another young quarterback, Justin Fields, at 74, number seven. And <laughs> speaking of young quarterbacks, right? There's your Bengals uh, at 75. So if the Bengals can maintain that type of a defense uh, up there in the top quarter, uh, they'll give, them a ch they give their offense a chance to kind of pick it up. All right. Turnover. You got to love turnovers, man. Look, look who's tied for first and second, the Bills and the Cowboys. And five of the Cowboys' uh, interceptions all by a young guy named Diggs, who's related to a young guy named Diggs on the Bills. Interesting, interesting. Saints at plus five tied with, there's those Cardinals. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? At, uh, you get to, you're a plus in the turnover category. You can generally win. Surprise, the Colts. Here's the Colts, the Chargers, the Seahawks, and the Bears. That pretty much wraps up your top, one through eight in the categories for the Sterling Pro Football Net Point Power Rankings. So there you have it, ladies and germs. All right. Let's transition over to the Bias Plus reports. Now the Bias Plus reports are my invention, okay? We're looking at the net points and we're looking at the turnover differential and there's net in both, right? The basic idea is that if one team is winning by 25, another team is winning by an average of five net points, right? They're winning plus five, winning all their games by at least five points. The other team is winning all their games by at least 25 points, and these teams are going to play each other. Put it together, the difference goes to 
team with the higher net points. And they, you say that he has the bias. You can't say he's going to win just because they've been scoring 20, 20 plus extra points a game. There's a good chance he will. I mean, that's the bottom line, right? Same thing with turnover differential. So let's take a look at the bias plus reports for the upcoming week. That would be week five in the NFL, starting off with the Thursday night game, LA Rams at Seattle Seahawks. Now we saw from the rankings that the Rams, okay, uh, were six offensively and they were 18th defensively, right? The Seahawks, however, 16th offensively and defensively the Seahawks were actually 22nd. So it makes sense then that the Rams would be favored in this particular game. Now the Rams just had to deal with Tyler Murray and that Cardinal um, offense and that Cardinal defense. One of the things I found out about that Cardinal defense we'll talk about in, in a few minutes, um, but it, it, it kind of determines what you want to do game plan wise when you kind of know, especially when you're looking at their defense. So bias plus report, Week five, LA Rams at Seattle Seahawks, bias plus score of 10, favors the Rams. All right. <sighs> New York Jets at Atlanta Falcons. Now I have to double check here because um, I know that Sunday, the NFL uh, schedule means that they will be playing at 9.30. Okay, that is this game, the Jets and the Falcons, and that's going to be from London. So 9.30 a.m. Sunday, you know, don't miss it. Uh, set your clocks. It looks like the uh, Falcons will be considered the home team, Jets at Falcons. And uh, That's how that's going to work. Right now, bias plus score of one, <laughs> one favors the Falcons. So you're going to see a wide range of bias plus score. I think the biggest is like 90, you know, which really favors one particular team. But a bias plus score of one means that these teams have produced at about the same rate. Right now, Jets look hot, man. Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson is, is, is telling his receivers, go deep, I got you. And he's dropping 60-yard dimes um, after having escaped, you know, uh, the rush, you know, ran. And Ben and I, funny, as we talked about this, I said, Ben, you know, a lot of these, these quarterbacks, they, man, they roll out, they just keep running. I said, you know, except for Mahomes, you know, Mahomes will pull up and he's looking for that pass. Man, talking about pulling up, looking for the pass, Zach Wilson did that darn thing. So it's going to be very exciting for the people in England. And you understand the NFL is making an international push. There's a lot of international American football being played in Europe, Africa, Asia. I mean, you got leagues, you got teams playing American style football. I'm not talking about soccer and I'm not talking about rugby talking about the kind of football that we play on Sundays when they lace it up right here in the NFL. Those rules, those setups, those players, and the NFL is trying to bring, they're bringing some players in, you know, giving them a chance to have an opportunity. And also the colleges are now recruiting those European players. So, you know, you're seeing a lot more foreign names um, coming out of college and then filtering into the NFL. They have a Football school, I do believe, in England, the NFL does. So they're literally training uh, American football players there. Bias plus score one favors the Falcons. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that particular game. All right. Green Bay Packers at Cincinnati Bengals. Now, we talked about the Packers. We talked about the Bengals. Packers are hot. They're on track. Uh, Aaron's letting his hair down, okay? And his, his, the media has uh, ripples 
going on because he let his hair down, right? Uh, with the Packers, again, the skew is in. Net points, they're minus five. The Bengals are actually ninth at plus 17. So it's going to be interesting to see how that, that Packer defense, uh, which is ranked 19th, stands up against the Bengals offense, which is ranked 20th, okay? They're scoring, the Bengals are scoring 92 points a game. The Packers are giving up 100. So, you know, I shouldn't say per game. That's total points scored in the uh, first four games. So um, the, the favorite goes to the Bengals. This is going to be a very interesting game and I think a good uh, test match. Um, and I have to put the, a check mark here for a potential intriguing game of the week for game five on the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. All right. Lions at Vikings. Okay. Oh, my. We talked about the Lions and the Bears last week. Again, this is an NFC Central matchup. You know, hey, look, I like the Lions' heart. The Lions lost a lot of heart when they lost some of their defensive players. Um, I think that uh, this is going to be interesting, but the bias plus score 41 favors the Vikings, and Kirk Cousins has his moments, and this is probably a chance for him to have one of those moments. Okay. 41 bias plus score, 41 favors the Vikings. Broncos at Steelers. Bias plus score of 64 favors the Broncos. Now, Broncos came out early, okay, uh, with Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, Teddy is efficient, uh, but now Teddy's hurt. Drew Locke is on the scene now. And so, little more erratic you know i don't know if you want to bet any money on drew lock uh big ben and the steelers need to get things going but they're going to need a run game because ben's not moving fast and the broncos defense can come get you and watch out for the junior at left corner um you throw that ball over there there's a junior over there whose father is an all pro i'll let you look it up um, you know, watch out throwing the ball willy nilly in that direction. Bias plus score favors the Broncos. Um, I'm interested to see if the Steelers are ready to stand up. Here you go. <clears throat> Dolphins at Buccaneers. Okay. Bias plus score 65 favors the Bucks. Remember what I said? You win by this, they win by this, their favor, you know, it kind of works out that way. I would be surprised. If the Dolphins really gave the Bucks some serious run, uh, Tua, you know what I'm saying? Tua, when you look across the league at rookie and second year quarterbacks, you know where do you rank Tua? I mean, you're looking at Justin Herbert, looking at Zach Wilson, looking at Justin Fields, looking at Trey Lance. Where do you put Tua in all of that? I think he's still a mystery, but the bias plus favors the Bucks. I see no no reason to even question that one right there. Okay, there's the there's the uh, the team <laughs> with the skill that's New Orleans Saints at the Washington football team. Uh, let me give a quick shout out to Good Morning Football. Last week, Ben and I talked about the Washington football team, and I said, I like the name. The Washington football team, that's a good name, Washington football team. I'm a, I would stick with that. It's, a foot, it's the football team. That's easy to say. Bias plus score, 54, favors the Saints. Ben said he was not going to call the Washington football team's defense vaunted anymore. They're giving up way too many points, but they got scary Terry. Uh, they, they have a very spunky offense. Uh, they still have uh, a pretty good defense. And the, the New Orleans Saints now, okay, this is, this is now the, uh, the um, this is now, what's his name's team?
This is now Jameis Winston's team. And one of the things I wondered is, was or is, will the Saints still play the same game with Taysom Hill that they played when Drew Brees was there? Now, we all, we all knew that Drew Brees was not going to run. Drew Brees was efficient in the short passing game. Um, but when they wanted to run that option type stuff, uh, they would put Taysom Hill in there. Now, they also put Taysom Hill in at tight end and, you know, kick and turner. He done a little bit of everything. But they did put him in as an option quarterback, and they ran that. It looks as if they're still doing that uh, with, um, with Jameis Winston. So they're bringing Taysom, Taysom Hill in, taking Jameis out in certain situations. Very interesting. You know, some quarterbacks throw red zone interceptions. And if you can run the ball in the red zone uh, in whatever way you can, uh, it's, it's a good strategy. If you're going to run a quarterback and you don't have to run your starting quarterback, boom, that's even better. So, you know, Washington football team, uh, you got your, your – um, work cut out for you. The Saints are heavily favored. Remember, we had a bias plus of one, and I said to you, there are some bigger numbers in the bias plus scores. Eagles at Panthers, bias plus score 42 favors the Panthers. Now, we are here in Philadelphia, so we get all of the Eagle news. It's Eagle this and Eagle that. And the Eagles are going to get tested because the Panthers are no joke right now, okay? Um, the Panthers uh, have the quarterback who is actually uh, the number one scoring quarterback in the league in terms of running touchdowns in. Sam Darnold is like leading the league in rushing touchdown by quarterbacks. I believe he has like five right now and he's setting records and everything. Sam Darnold having just, you know, left the Jets and people questioned, could Sam Darnold play? You know, was he going to go down in Carolina? Would it be a bust or a boom? You know, and Sam Darnold's playing pretty well right now. The Eagles are still finding their, their way. And you got a rookie, um, basically a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach. The Panthers have what a second year head coach and a quarterback who's played, you know, four to six years somewhere in that area for Sam Darnold. So Sam Darnold's been around. He's no rookie. Their coach is no is not a rookie. He's still kind of young at the NFL level, but he seems to have his head on straight. And the Panthers are playing good defense. Uh, when we look at the Panthers in this situation, defensively, they're ranked third. So when you got a team that's ranked third defensively and offensively, the Eagles are 19th. That definitely favors the Panthers, unless the Eagles uh, play above there, what they've been playing up to this particular point. So Eagles at Panthers and the Eagles got to go visit Carolina, so they're not going to be home. Uh, 42 bias plus score favors the Panthers. Titans at Jaguars, bias plus score 28 favors the Titans. The Jaguars have all types of issues right now. Their coach is going through all types of stuff because he decided after their last game, which was a loss, that he wouldn't travel back with the team. He was going to stay in Ohio and so-called visit his grandchildren. He wound up having video of him. Uh, I guess he was getting lap dance. I haven't even seen the video, but from what they're saying, looks like a lap dance situation, uh, married man, children, um, and he's not with his team and he's the head coach. Um, very interesting what the, the controversy that as a head coach have, have surrounded him, like, like bringing in, uh, what's his name? The uh, his old quarterback to try him out at tight end, you know, why, what are you doing? You know, it's, I, he's made two or three really almost clownish moves. And I'm really questioning. I mean, he's going to even have to win, you know, he's going to have to turn this Jaguar team around and win, or he will be gone next year. I don't think uh, 
You know, that's what I think. Okay, there's my my uh, editorial comment on the Jaguars and their coaching situation. Titans at Jaguars, 28 favors the Titans. Derrick Henry got to get going, and uh, the Titans can get this done. I do believe. You know, there you go. Next up, Patriots at Texans. Well, bias plus score 49 favors the Patriots. Uh, the Texans before injury um we're really starting to look you know like they they, they were going to be somewhat competitive this year despite all the turmoil with deshaun watson and the changes at quarterback again uh excuse me changes at quarterback but also at head coach so again you have a rookie head coach here situation uh patriots are going uh into houston and mark uh, matt jones rather excuse me Mac Jones is playing efficient football. Uh, I think that this will probably fall the way of the Patriots in this situation, uh, but it should be interesting. I like to see if the Texans can come out and do a little something, something that people are not expecting. Why am I rooting for the Texans? I have no idea. Okay, the Bears are going to visit the Raiders. Last plus score 29 favors the Raiders. As we said, this is the beginning of the Justin Fields era. Uh, it's also the Darren Waller era for the Raiders, and I'm surprised that uh, the Raiders haven't used him more. So bottom line is the Bears are still ranked 10th defensively, offensively, the Raiders are ranked ninth. So that that's a, a pretty interesting push there. In terms of the point production, the, the Bears are – uh, ranked 30th, but it's the Justin Fields era, and so we have to see how that will, you know, could be could be changing uh, very quickly. Uh, Justin Fields uh, is able to get going against the Raiders, so this is going to be one of those very interesting games. I'm going to mark it as a potential intriguing game of the week. Browns at Chargers. Okay, two good teams. Bias plus score of only eight favors the Browns. When is this close? Man, this automatically becomes a potential intriguing game of the week. Uh, when I'm looking at the Browns, I'm seeing that they're ranked fourth in net points and the Chargers are ranked eighth. That's pretty much the biggest difference right there. The Chargers actually won the turnover differential battle. Um, so the 11 uh net points that the uh browns had going for them got pared down to eight so let's keep an eye on those turnovers they can make all the difference uh there and again when you're looking at quarterbacks man if you had the choice today of the browns quarterback for the chargers quarterback who would you take I'm going Chargers, <laughs> no doubt about it. Baker Mayfield is doing great with the Browns. They're, they're a good team, but just on an athletic capability. Uh, and, you know, you add in the smarts and you add in good decision-making and all of that from a young Justin Fields. I mean, uh, from a <laughs> Justin Fields is on our brain, right? Uh, Herbert. Um, I have to go with Herbert, no doubt about it. All right. NFC East, Giants at Cowboys. Come on, Giants. Ben needs a win. Pick up his spirits, help him along there, give him a birthday present. Bias plus score 47 favors the Cowboys. Danny Dimes is going to have to do some thing, thing to things to get this thing going. And of course, their run game is back. Saquon's back. You can throw it to him. You can hand it to him. You just got to give it to him as many times as possible. Uh, however, the Cowboys have a guy named Diggs at cornerback who's like got five interceptions. I wouldn't play with that guy too much. Um, Dak is like a machine right now. So the, that's where the Giants are really going to have a – off. they're going to – the Cowboys score points. That's pretty much what they do. The Giants are going to have to continue to have to score with them, or their defense is going to have to do something uh, a little different than what they've been doing. 
uh, points against the Giants defense is ranked 15th uh, points for the Cowboys offense is ranked fourth. So there you go. The challenge is upon you. All right. How are we doing here? I'm seeing Giants. Okay. We got three more games left. That means we're in the into the evening games. Ah, okay. Here you go. The Niners at Cardinals, my beloved Niners, by a score of 60 favors the Cardinals. This is an NFC West. So that's, you know, two NFC West games. The NFC West is banging right now. They get the, the uh, Rams and the Seahawks, the Niners and the Cardinals. Man, we're, we're beating each other up in the NFC West, but that's okay. Uh, Niners, again, this is what happened, all right? So I... <laughs> My Niners playing the Cardinals. Um, I simulate the game. I run with Trey Lance. And as you can see, I did not have a good day at a 45% completion. Colin Murray at a 91% completion. However, my game plan defensively was to contain Colin Murray and keep him from running. I was pretty successful at that part of it. As you can see, the Cardinals. Uh, scored nine points, which means they did not get a touchdown in. So we held them to three field goals. My offense, however, just did not click. And it, it was interesting. Um, this is where good game playing and knowing your offense comes in because I kept trying to run to the edges. Um, and I've been successful running to the edges. Uh, you know, I mean, we got we got the run game. So we're running inside, we're running outside. We're doing a little bit of all of that. But long story short, when it comes down to it, um, the, the Cardinals have strong edges on one side. They got J.J. Watt. On the other side, they got Chandler Jones. And so where I needed to run was at that middle because that was the softest point, but not realizing that early enough and not having the game plan in place to do that um, is why I just, you know, I didn't score. And you can't throw that ball out willy nilly against that Cardinal secondary. They got guys like Buda Baker sitting back there waiting and so uh, a few of those interceptions and long story short, I took an L, a close L, and I'm hoping that my Niners can keep it as close as that. I mean, because let's face it, I mean, uh, if we can stay anywhere near those guys, we have a shot. And that's that's what it's all about right there. OK. All right. So as you can see, based on the Cardinals, they are the number one offense in the nfl right now uh the cardinals are and my niners are the number seven offense so we aren't far off of the difference that the cardinals are ninth defensively and my niners are 22nd so there you go challenges upon us go niners all right Sunday night is going to be so much fun. So much fun. Look at that bias plus score of 91. The highest bias plus of the weekend. Favoring the Bills against the Chiefs. Really? I mean, it just doesn't even seem right. The highest bias plus of the weekend. Favoring the Bills against the Chiefs at 91. Well, number one. The Bills are number one in net points at plus 90. The Chiefs are 13 at plus nine. So the Chiefs, we talked about how their defense was in the lower end of the um, rankings. Let's go to number 31 out of 32 for points given up. That's how you get a bias plus score of 91 going against you when you're the 31st ranked uh, defense. And the Bills 
are the number one ranked defense and the number two ranked offense. So that means the Chiefs have some work to do. The defense is no joke with the Bills. This is a definite intriguing game of the week. Um, man, how to pick one out of this group of games is amazing. But Bills at Chiefs, Ben's pretty much always uh, a Bills guy. He likes the Bills. I'd be interested to hear what he says about this particular game. I think he's going to go with the Bills. So there you go. All right. Monday night football. Carson Wentz leading the Colts. And I say Carson Wentz, even though he had two sprained ankles and, you know, he was looking a little um, beat up there for a minute playing against the Ravens, Lamar Jackson. I heard Lamar Jackson had a little bit of an injury, a little back issue. <laughs> hey, Ben, Lamar Jackson, could he be human? That is the question. Bias plus a score of 22, however, favors the Ravens. Uh, the Colts' action is not quite up to snuff at this particular point. Colts are coming in ranked 22nd in net points with minus 14. Ravens are coming in ranked 12th at plus 13. So that's a pretty nice net difference. When you think about net difference, think about your number line, right? Go back to your kid's fifth grade uh, math book and look at that number line. And that, that difference between this point and that point, it can be wider and it can be smaller. In this particular case, you're looking at a minus 14 and a plus 13, right? Just add those two together where you got 25. That's a net 25 difference. And it looks as if the Colts actually have the turnover differential favoring them with the Ravens uh, at minus one and the Colts at plus four. So that sort of um, mitigated uh, the net point advantage, but it's still advantage Ravens. So, wow, what a week we have coming up in week five, 2021. Uh, the uh, Eagles are rooting for Carson Wentz to get his snaps in so that they can get the, the uh, a first round draft pick, which was part of that trade deal that they had uh, with the Colts when they sent Carson Wentz there, they'll get draft picks. And the more he plays, the higher their draft picks is what it kind of boils down to. So, all right, that wraps up the Bias Plus report for the NFL week five. All right, so before we leave the Bias Plus realm completely, let's go back and look at the bias plus buster of the week for NFL week four, 2021. Now we always say with the bias plus and the net points, no conjecture, no opinion. This is pure numerical situations, okay? So sometimes the team that's not favored wins. And the Baltimore Ravens were not favored last week. Their unfavorable bias plus score was 58 so they who the heck were they supposed to play last week i gotta go back and double check that All right, so week four comes up. The Baltimore Ravens are playing the the, uh, the Denver Broncos. Bias plus score of 58 favored the Broncos. Now, we question the Broncos because we question who they played and, and, and things of that nature. But as I said, uh, Teddy Bridgewater came out pretty much rolling uh, with the Broncos, and they looked great, looked good on defense, et cetera. So the Ravens were actually... You know, not favored in that, but they won the game by plus 16. So between the unfavorable bias score of 58, let's try to say that one more time, the unfavorable bias plus score of 58, 
and the net win of plus 16. The final score was 23 to 7. Add those two together, and the bias plus Buster score was 74. So, again, congratulations to the Baltimore Ravens, the NFL Week 4 bias plus Buster of the week. So first up, I just want to mention, uh, and, I, and I, I asked the question, what do you think here? You got the halftime lineup uh, for the Super Bowl. Dr. Dre, Snoop, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, Lamar. This is a all-star cast that they put together. Of course, Jay-Z now is interconnected with the nfl so he's going to have things on and popping when it comes to entertainment no doubt about it so this will be an extra sensory halftime with this particular group uh it'll be very interesting to see how they tear the stage down or tear the roof off the sucker hey no parliament funkadelic <laughs> that's his old guys all right I mentioned his name two or three times, Trayvon Diggs. I talked about the Diggs. He is uh, related. I think he's the brother uh, of uh, Stephon Diggs, a wide receiver for the Bills. And he was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Month with five picks. Uh, he is hot. Again, throw that ball over to his side um, at your own peril. All right. Last but not least, as we move up, and through the different videos from Ben and Barry on football. There again, there's Ben. Happy birthday, old guy. There you go. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. Urban Meyer, we talked a little bit about the Jaguars and, and uh, in the Bias Plus reports and, and the issues that they're having. Uh, and I say here, when a leader goes left, then what? You know, can they depend on Urban Meyer to make good life decisions? That's the question, okay? Tim Tebow, you really wanted to run him in there at tight end? Really? I mean, you couldn't have found a better tight end in all of the NFL. You know, and you really wanted to run him in there. So it's, it's things like that that make you go, hmm, you know, what is this guy thinking? He's a brand new coach. Why is he playing that particular game? Should have left that alone. And then you find out that after a loss, I mean, you don't fly back with your team. Your team is hurting right now. You're their, their leader and you're not there with them. So again, Urban Meyer says has zero credibility with the Jaguars after the viral bar video, a player says that. The owner said he's gonna have to rebuild the trust. The owner came out with a statement. And how often does an owner come out with a statement on misbehavior by the head coach? I mean, that just doesn't happen that, that much because head coaches are maniacs in the film room. I mean, they these guys will come back after loss and not even go home, much less go, quote, to visit your grandchildren and wind up, you know, um, getting lap dances. So long story short, uh, it'll be interesting. I don't think Urban Meyer is going to survive into year two we will keep this um in our sights uh for next year and see how this all plays out all right that wraps up this session of ben and barry on football again happy birthday mr ben dickerson uh, i hope your day turns out better than you thought it would at the beginning of it um but uh welcome to another year and another turn of the planet uh, you normally say at the end, as we end out the show, so I'll say it for you, go Knowles. <laughs>